Good afternoon and welcome along to another episode of A Wandering Dork with me, Daniel. It's season 6, episode 4 today, and we've got a massive doubleheader coming up in this episode. We play leaders Luton Town, who we of course did our beta save with in FM20. That's the first game against the league leaders at the start. And then we face Bournemouth in the leasing.com trophy, another Premier League side that we'll be coming up against. We'll see how many familiar names they've got in the side, and whether we're able to get a decent result against them. But I am excited today because Luton are playing at Power Court. I'm getting to go to the new Luton. Luton Stadium which is exciting. They've got a Spaniard in charge so it's a little bit of an interesting one. Probably a clash of styles between the two sides. They've got George Grant doubtful with a torn hamstring. A player that's been there in real life in the past and then a couple of players suspended or ineligible. We've got a couple injured ourselves as you can see. It's Thompson and Sherring, two first 11 players who were out. We are starting to get a little struggle or two with injury but despite that we finally got out the relegation zone. We're just starting to creep our way up that league one table. But before we go and have a look at the recent results and of course take you through transfer deadline day and the two games today a massive thank you to everyone who continues to follow the series i really do greatly appreciate your support and if you are still enjoying it please do put a thumbs up on the video it makes such a difference to how the video performs and if you're new to the channel subscribe for daily fm20 content from my two long-term stories this one's every two days at 4 30 with our head coach director of football challenge on the days between but you can probably see the main important bit of news from this home screen and that's that john king's come to life up front finally started to scoring goals, contributing up front, taking that mantle over from Terrell Whitaker in past years. It's really helped us in front of goal. We've started to win a few games, scoring a few more than we would normally. Sam Sherrin's still been getting a few from set pieces, and defensively we've got a tiny little bit better. Not too much, we don't want to get too excited, but look at the schedule, I can show you what I mean. We're still having to score more than two to win some games, but we have been able to get three victories in the last month, and one of those was on the road as well. A really good performance, a really good outcome for us generally, and it takes our tally of league wins up to four now and only two more defeats to blemish the record since as well. So let's go through those six games in September off camera. You're with me of course for that devastating defeat against Northampton. I was a little bit frustrated at the end of the episode. Couldn't hide my disappointment at the clear cut chances being missed and after dominating the second half with 10 men to then go and lose it on a set piece. I was absolutely fuming as you probably remember. But let's go into September. A 3-1 defeat at MK Dons. Who cares about the leasing.com trophy? Unless we're playing Premier League sides like today we're just going to play complete results reserves and even then we're not going to play a first team against Bournemouth we just want to see how the lads can compete give the youngsters some football a little chance to shine but realistically we're not worried about getting through at this stage today it's just about surviving in league one trying to edge ourselves up that table and away to leaders Luton and sides of that ilk we just want to try and avoid embarrassing ourselves but away to Blackpool we got a crucial 1-0 win John King the man in the first half with a goal and a 2-1 defeat at Bristol Rovers Sam Sharon with the header to give us the lead at half time but we lost it in the 93rd minute it's been a tale of our season actually you remember the first two of the season against Lincoln it was the 92nd minute Northampton of course it was late on as well and the same went for that Bristol Rovers match but we bounced back in style against Bradford a 5-2 victory two late goals to put gloss on it Terrell Whitaker with a brace in his first start in a while and then Thompson and Dean Lee getting their first goals for the club Matt Smith adapting to league one with a goal early on but it was followed up again with defeat away at Wimbledon Joe Pig at that man scoring a goal again a player I'm not too fond of after his spell at Luton and probably the least hard-working footballer I've ever seen. But he seems to be doing quite well at Wimbledon in real life, and to be fair in this game too. And Wimbledon right up near the top of that table. It's another realistic game for us to win stay up. But we did get a win against Southend, who were the basement side at the start of the day. A hat-trick from John King as he really came to the party. It was one all at half-time, but he came out on fire in the second. And we got that 3-1 win, a comfortable result, and it lifted us two points clear of relegation too. So into these two, we've got a little bit of form on our hands. I'm really hoping we'll be able to take take advantage of that today but away against the best side in the league we know it's going to be tough and to be honest the main thought for today is damage limitation but let's go and get into that first game we mentioned it's away against Luton Town if you haven't seen my beat save with them it was a seven part special trying to keep them in the championship it's only we're not doing particularly well in real life unfortunately but the smallest budget in the league a really difficult task go and see how we got on in that one the link to the series is in the eye above and it included a lot of emotional rash decisions from my heart rather than my head but I tried my best to be professional throughout so if you haven't seen it do give it a try but I would imagine we're going to be
be heavy underdogs. There's the FA Cup for qualifying rounds in as well. I didn't even get to see there. It didn't show us. Let's have a look. Were we underdogs? Oh, heavy for underdogs. 7-1. to one, Luton 3-1 to one on. I would have thought it would have been a bit more than that, to be honest. We've got a referee who's given three red cards in six matches. Luton nearly sold out power court. 16,500 in there. That is exactly what I want our town to be in the future. I'm really looking forward to the stadium in real life. But let's go and make our changes that are required today. Sherwin picked up a knock since the last game, but we did get our trialist in permanently in Barry Cotter. He's a really good young central defender. 25 years of age, he's a right back in centre half. Four under 21 caps for Republic of Ireland. Three star ability, three and a half potential. And most importantly, look at his physical attributes. All 13, 14, 15 for pace. He's absolutely brilliant across the board. And we eventually got him for one and a half grand a week. He's playing alongside Brown, who was another player we got on deadline day. Both of our signings featuring today. Kieran Brown joined us, a nominal fee, £42,000 from Mansfield. A really good centre-half and left-back, 26 years of age, Northern Irish under-21 international. £1.4 a week, three-star ability, three-and-a-half potential. Not as quick, but really good at everything else. And I'm really looking forward to working with him too. He's done really well in his four starts so far, although we are a little bit stretched today. As both of our first-choice centre-halves that weren't available. Now, Jack Walker's fit again now. Let's get him back in the side for Brown. Really good to have him back available. And James Simpson, the right back's fit again too. So we'll go and put Miles Judd on the bench. Brown's going to go on the bench in place of Jones, a player who'll probably be a casualty in January. He's done really well for us in his 72 appearances, but fifth choice centre half now, we can't really keep him about. So he's probably going to be off in the winter window. I think we've got Humphreys Durnley covering on the left wing at the minute, just because we've not had anyone available. But Parkhouse is fit enough for the bench today, but I'm just going to leave him off for Whitaker for one more. I'm thinking out loud, trying to take you through the process. Of course, not ideal not having a left winger today, but aside from that, we've got a pretty strong lineup. Cotter making his debut at centre half. Harry Campbell in goal. Simpson and Smith the fullbacks. Cotter and Walker are the central defenders. Cotter is a brilliant time to make his debut. Again, there's no pressure to get a result in, and he'll get to go and press against loads of fans as well. Hopefully, he'll rise to the biggest occasion. We've got Tom Cook on the right wing. He's had an awful season. Humphreys Durney covering over on the left, and then Moles and Smith in central midfield. Simpson joined by John King up front, and we'll be hoping from some magic from the centre forward, trying to get a few goals for us to get us out of trouble. But let's go and get into the first game against Luton. Of course, there's plenty of optimism around. We're out with the relegation zone, but we're playing the top side, and it'll probably all come crashing down today. Hang on a minute, hang on. I've just got into the game. We've got to stop immediately. Aaron Ramsey is playing in the number 10 role. And not the Aaron Ramsey. I was getting very scared for a minute there. I was wondering what on earth is he doing there? This guy's still worth one and a half million on six and a half grand a week. He looks just as good and potentially as the other Aaron Ramsey. But he's still playing at Luton at the moment. And that's giving me a little bit of a scare to start with. They've got Jack Marriott back for a second spell up front. He did really well before, got his move to Derby. And he's now back at Luton scoring at over one in two. 10 goals in 11 league starts this year. We're not going to be able to stop this side, are we? We are going to get absolutely tonked. They've got Brendan Galloway still there at centre-half. Not having the injury struggles he's had in real life. Good to see no Simon Sluger in goal. They've got O'Brien over on the left wing. He's a good player too. So many stars in this Luton side. And I can see immediately why they're top of the league. They really seem to have put together a good squad here. We're playing a 4-4-2, so we're going to get overrun in the middle. That Ramsey's going to have acres of space to run into. But I don't have a holding midfielder to put in there. Don't have a third really good option because our other one's playing on the left wing at the moment as we have no other wide players available. So let's get into the first half. We tell the lads to pick up where they left off. A brilliant 3-1 win against Southend it was last time and with two minutes gone we're yet to concede a shot and that's probably the biggest positive we'll get out of today. We're just under 15 on the clock. It's a Luton Town corner. Into the front post. Marriott loses out to Simpson. The target man back doing his work but it's come back to Ramsey. Finds Fleming on the edge. Hits the post and then the keeper. We're not on the public beater anymore. We've switched back to the old game. So we'll probably see a lot of clear-cut chances missed again in this one. But it's better than what we had in the last game, where every shot was getting palmed into the net. I think Thursdays in particular with Scunthorpe, I was so angry in that episode. I was trying my best, but it was really annoying me as Fleming shoots from the edge of the box. But it's straight into the arms of Harry Campbell, thankfully. We survived with 15 minutes gone. We've had as many shots as Luton. And that was their first effort on target as well. A really positive start for us. Simpson with a through ball. Kings in one-on-one. -on -one. Brilliant save from Collins. A clear-cut chance goes begging. 
thinking is saved by the keeper. We knew it was going to be a problem and it's not frustrating me as much now. I know the alternative is far, far worse, so I'm just going to suck it up and live with it. Reed heads away the corner and now he's running on the counter. Two on two briefly for Luton here. As a man on the left, he's drifted offside. Brilliant tackle, Matt Smith, the left back. Humphreys Durney picks it up on the wing. He skins a man as well. Not bad for a deep line playmaker. King gets the ball up front and he's holding it up well. Eventually he goes back to Matthew Smith. Matt Smith, the left back. Long ball forward to Moles. Into King. He's in one-on-one -on -one again. Straight at Collins. Another clear-cut chance goes begging. And we're not going to get frustrated anymore. We've seen the alternatives. We've seen how it can be. But at nil-nil, we've put in two brilliant efforts. And we should really be leading the league leaders at power core. I'm not quite sure why there's no seat in here. If you have a look at the stand, there's just loads of terracing. I don't know why. It's a 17,500 seater. There's no fans there either. Where are the 16,500 people? Seems to be a glitch. And trust it to a my beloved Luton Town, but thankfully we're not managing them in this one, as Maria puts Ramsey in, he finally scores, Ramsey puts it in the net for Luton, their first clear cut chance, a one on one, no mistake from the number 10, and a brilliant finish puts the leaders ahead, we 10 to the break, we trail 1-0. Well, two to the break. Humphreys Durney with a cross in. O'Neill heads away as far as Cotter. Can the debutant do something? He goes all the way back to halfway. That's the sort of thing that gets the fans sighing. Matt Smith tries to put it to the left. His long ball's blocked. Matthew Smith, the central midfielder, wins it back. And the two of them keep exchanging passes. We've gone all the way back to the keeper. That's kind of been the best option. It's going to frustrate the fans so much. We need to get on the front foot again. As we go long, it's aimless in the end. The goalkeeper was never going to pick out that pass. Galloway finds McLeod in the middle. Out to the right. It's intercepted by Durnley. Had a really good game on the left. And now he's in one-on-one. -on -one. King's in the middle. He finds him and puts it over. Another great chance goes begging. How has John King missed that one? He's a really good young striker. But three clear-cut chances have gone begging in this half. And as a result, we trail Luton 1-0. There's no one in the stands. Where are the 16,500? Where are the seats, more importantly? I've no idea what's happened to that animation. But a wonderful first-half performance from the lads. We've got absolutely nothing that we deserve from that half. We deserve to be on three points. We deserve to be 3-1 up, if anything. But unfortunately, we're still not clinical in front of goal. John King's got a really poor mate in as a result. Matthew Smith's not had the best game in the middle, actually. But with an hour gone, we're still trailing here at Power Court, and we're going to have to start thinking about subs. McLeod with a court free kick on the right for Luton. Smith heads away as far as King. What's the striker doing back there? He gives it away as well. O'Brien to McLeod. Now read 20 yards out. Back to Mellish in the central midfield position. They're keeping it well, but they don't look like creating an opening. But equally, we're not able to get out and Galloway picks it up on the left wing now but a good block gets the cross away to Simpson. Here's Tom Cook on the counter attack. Can he beat one? He's got two men up with him. One of them's John King on the left. He beats a man into the box. Can he score this time? Oh he's tipped wide. Brilliant save on this occasion. Another clear cut chance wasted. Four now for John King but we've got to appreciate the save on that occasion. That one was a much better attempt. Mellish heads away the corner. It finds Reed. I'm thinking about switching the two strikers over actually. Get Simpson onto the left hand side just playing as the target man. John King on the right on his natural foot. Hopefully that will help with us moving forward. Although one of those chances he missed was from the right. 25 to go. Let's make some subs. King's anxious now after missing all those shots. So Whitaker the super sub to come on. Top scorer in the last three years. Can he do it again? Thumbs up and fingers crossed everyone. Matt Smith's had a poor game. Not the best season he's had actually. Callum Wright will come on on the left. Humphreys Durnley will go into the playmaker role. And then I'm not sure what to do with the last sub. I think I'm going to rest Simpson. Just back from injury the right back. Let's get Judd on again. Just give him a breather and we'll get back into it with 25 to go. But this has gone far better than I could have expected. I know we've wasted clear cut chances and we haven't been able to get the points we deserve. But the performance is so much at this stage. As long as we stay out the relegation zone, which we are at the moment by the same two points, I'm pretty happy with where we stand and I hope the lads will take courage from the performance. Well, late on, Barry Cotter's got a yellow card on his debut, but a really solid performance from him at the back, actually. We lose 1-0 to the leaders, Luton, but we actually gave them a really big scare. I'm so impressed with that performance. The lads look delighted at their efforts, and we'll be hoping we can build on that in the cup game in the week, and we're putting a strong performance against Bournemouth 23s. We stay two points clear of the relegation zone. To put it into perspective, we've got the likes of Sunderland below us. Really big sides on paper. Bradford, a massive club. Plymouth got a big fan base. MK Don's obviously a lot of resources behind them and between the games I just want to check the stats to see what our wage bills like compared to the league I did say I'd go and do it at the start of the season I completely forgot so apologies for that let's go and have a look at the salary per annum we are bottom by some distance we're nearly half of the next best side in the league Blackpool in 23rd spending nearly two million a year on wages we're only spending one and a quarter that is 
really impressive for us to be competing and you can see how much staying up would mean to us. So let's see what the media said about the game quickly. They say poor performance, that's really harsh. We've been in such an effort, we had so many clear cut chances but the only change I am going to make now is switch these two strikers round. It seems to have made a difference a bit in the other save so we're going to put John King as the advance forward on his stronger right foot and then we're going to put Simpson on the left as a target man on attack. Hopefully on that duty he'll be better. He likes to drift in off the left anyway so it makes a bit of sense for him moving forward. He doesn't really move into the channels though so hopefully he'll just be a good target up front. But in three days time we've got our leasing.com trophy game coming up. That's against Bournemouth 23s the Premier League team so I hope you'll come and join me again in a minute for that one. But fingers crossed we'll be able to get three points with the youngsters. Right, game number two, the cup game against Bournemouth under 23s. You know we lost the first one, so we're on zero points at the moment. A couple of tied players having to play. Kieran Jones, 78% fitness. No idea the reasoning for that. And then Callum Wright played in the 23, so he's not quite 100% fit yet. But he'll do a job for us today. We've got Gallagher and Matt Smith on the bench, so I'm not too worried if either of those get a little injury. We've got Humphreys Durney keeping his place on the left, as there's literally no other options at the moment. But aside from that, it's a completely changed 11. Grant Smith in goals, and Mura at left back. Judd at right back, Jones and Brown in the middle, we've got Broom over on the right wing, Wright and Watson in the middle, Humphreys Durnley over on the left, and then Whitaker joined by Parkhouse up front, trying them the opposite way round to see if that improves the clear cut chance ratio, hopefully on their stronger foot they can just glide them across the keeper, and we'll see if that makes any sort of difference at all, fingers crossed it will, and let's see if we can get this result against Bournemouth, and try and get on course for the second round of the trophy. 4-4-2s across the board, and I think almost all regens for the Bournemouth side. Only one player that's not a 22-year-old Miguel Aziz. He must be about 16 at the start of the game for that to work. Well, a 4.4 million, six appearances, two goals for Bournemouth's first team. A really good player, actually. Now, I hope there's not too many of that quality in the side. Otherwise, we could be in for a pretty long day at the office again. A long night, I should say, in front of the fans at Crawley. A long old trek to come for a leasing.com match at home. So hopefully we'll be able to motivate the lads, put on a strong performance, and at least give them something to cheer about and maybe even get three points on the board too. We're just over 10 gone. It's a Bournemouth throw at left back into Bailey, the central midfielder. I'm not too optimistic about this. I'd imagine they'll be quite good footballers, but they do go all the way back to the keeper on that occasion. Derby going to get the ball forward, I'd imagine. Just short to the centre half. They're playing tricks with us at the back, and hopefully we can take advantage and catch them out. Maybe try and win it a bit higher up the pitch. But here is Aziz, who we mentioned. Goes for it from 40 yards out. Certainly not lacking confidence. He might be a little bit deficits in terms of ability, but his confidence is through the roof at 22. But with 20 minutes it's gone, it remains nil-nil. Not too much in the game so far. Dernley into the box, headed wide by Watson. That was a really good chance for the playmaker. Not the best person we want that to fall to in the box, but he put in a decent effort, to be fair. And it only just went wide of that far post. The keeper was caught in absolutely no man's land. But 10 minutes to the break, it remains nil-nil. And we've arguably been the better side so far. Well, half-time, nil-nil, bit of a nothing game. Not really had any of those clear chances like we did against Luton. We're going to fire the lads up, tell them we're disappointed, say we want to win against this young team, try and use our experience to get by them. We've actually got a few of last year's heroes in the squad, as you can see. So the likes of Brooms and Zamura, they were quite regular last year, particularly after we lost Anthony in January in Zamura's case. Parkhouse and Whitaker were obviously the first two strikers. Callum Wright was a regular off the bench. So so many players, Kieran Jones at centre-half too. And of course, Grant Smith was the first choice keeper as well. It's almost all of last year's promotion team. It's Barnes on the left trying to cross it for Bournemouth. Back to Clark and now Barnes again. Don't let him get it in that easily. It's McGonagall on the edge backs to Minton. Plenty of time to shoot. It's just wider than near post. And that's another thing I've noticed actually recently. A lot of near post goals on that public beater. We've changed it on this one to try and make it a bit easier. So fingers crossed that won't be the case now. So let's make some substitutions. Give the tyre players a break. Callum Wright's going to be replaced in the middle by Matthew Smith. Jeremiah Watson might have to be a box to boxer maybe we can do that with Matthew Smith actually I think it'll suit Watson better as the youngster we don't need him fit for the weekend it doesn't matter if he's knackered so let's just take him off for now John King's gonna come on for Whitaker, try and get us that winner up front I'd like to give Humphreys Durnley a rest as well he's gonna have to play at the weekend so I'll bring on Tom Cook for him and hopefully he'll be able to make an impact off the bench Right, 10 to go, not much happening, so we're going to go positive, demand a bit more from the lads, just see if we can get one or two more attacks out of them, but it looks like with a minute plus stoppage time to go, it's going to be a 4-0-0 draw, so apologies for the second game of this episode, not much excitement in this one, but hang on a minute, Zamura down the line, here's Parkhouse on the left wing in stoppage time, all the way back to Zamura, there was no need for that, but let's get it into the box, long ball forward, Parkhouse flicks on as far as Broom, back to Watson who finds Matthew Smith, and we need one of those cutting through balls, here's Matthew Smith again, playing 
is short with Watson. They can't really find that opening. It's Parkhouse again, 30 yards out. Back to Smith and now Watson. Into King, there we go. Great chance, great finish. John King on the right seems to have worked. Got rid of his short goal drought. That'll give him confidence for the weekend. And we stay in the leasing.com trophy on the last game of victory we'll see us through. And that is exactly what we wanted out of today. A brilliant finish to end what was a pretty boring game in truth. Let's go and tell the lads well done. Just try and build that confidence up. Keep them going nicely. We've got fifth place Notts County at the weekend. A side that finished three points above us in the promotion places last year. So we know it's a winnable game against that side. But we've just got to build that confidence again going up. Try and get a few more free agents of Cotter's quality. And if we do that, I'm actually quite confident we'll survive. Back on this game, we seem to be doing well. And hopefully switching those strikers round up top will fix those finishing issues long term. But a tight contest that we finish out on top of. And that's the most important thing here. We put in loads of brilliant performances. The Luton one's a good example. Four or five clear-cut chances, not won the game. But here, an absolutely nothing contest. But just one shot, one key highlight, one bit of entertainment late on. And we get the three points and a victory to go with it. And that's all we need to do 10 or 15 times this year. If we get 12 grand for the win, that'll help us out. Of course, we're still on a tiny budget as a club. Parkhouse did well, despite not scoring or setting anything up. A real good target man up top for us there. So let's finish on the schedule to see when we'll next be back. Pick out a couple of big games towards the end of the calendar year. So I've got my eye on those three games at the start of December and I'll give you the reasons for them. Obviously just before that we've got Chesterfield who won the National League narrowly against us the year we came up in the playoffs. But Oxford, Peterborough and Doncaster before we face Luton again after Christmas. A Boxing Day Bonanza, that'll be a nice one for me. But the Oxford game, they're right up there. A decent side at the top end of the league. Peterborough are a big side at this level anyway. They've been at the top end of League One or the bottom end of the Championship for about a decade in real life as well. And then Doncaster away, they're right next to us in the league at the moment. So we either Oxford or Doncaster alongside Peterborough and maybe a home game to see if we can get a win so let's see what position we're in when we get to that point of course the one against Oxford could be moved because that falls on FA Cup second round weekend I think and this is the weekend before because there's a little bit of a gap in the fixtures there but let's not worry about that for now we've got lots of work to do in the meantime Sheffield Wednesday at home in the league as well so many big sides at this level and it's going to be a really tough test for us to stay out of danger fingers crossed we can get a few wins under our belt though but if you did enjoy this episode and those two very different games actually, please do put a thumbs up on the video. It makes such a difference to how it performs. I really do appreciate your continued support. You don't know how much it means. We'll be back with this one in two days time with two of those big games as we mentioned at the start of December. We'll also in the meantime have the head coach tomorrow. We're settling into our new club. We're about to reach the January transfer window. If I've got my maths right, tomorrow will be the transfer deadline. So hopefully we'll be able to get some signings courtesy of our director of football as we have no say in transfers contract or staffing in that one so it leaves us with a little bit more of a challenge but we're making our way up the leagues quite nicely getting opportunities at the higher level we've had tactical changes all sorts of different things to contend with injuries on and off the pitch crisis it's certainly a very different style of save to this one where we're managing everything we're trying to build a club from scratch in that one we're just focused solely on the pitch Finally, I'm part of a podcast that does match day vlogs and interviews, and there's a few match day vlogs coming up this weekend. So we will have been to Northampton v Derby on the Friday night, a magical FA Cup tie, a proper romantic one, that one. On Saturday, I'm going to watch a Step 7 non-league game, so that's going to be a very different type of experience. And we've also had some recent ones with Forest versus Luton, myself trying to be impartial as a Luton fan. We had a massive one with a Watford Tranmere FA Cup tie this month, which was an absolutely wonderful game of football. And thank you so much for all of your support on those ones. The numbers have been absolutely incredible on them. And if you haven't seen them yet, please do click in the eye above for the playlist. A very different style to these episodes. A laid back approach, two or three of us normally at the matches. And we of course try and be as neutral as possible. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support of the series as always. I really do appreciate it greatly. And I hope to see you next time for some more big League One action. As we try and keep Dorking at this level for a second season. Try and build the finances and start to work off the pitch to make this club a reputable football League One. We'll <laughs>